this is a list of 10 things that help me as a classic artist. And, and I did actually put some time in writing this. Um, good kid. But uh, let's, let's advance to the next one. Um, so here, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to read through this or, or whatever. Maybe, maybe we'll just read through it and we'll talk about it. Uh, save the data on new techniques and advancements in software. Speed is critical in a fast-paced production environment where real life designs may have to be turned around in only a few hours. With a new tool or approach to get you there faster, use it to set yourself apart from other artists. So there are a lot of people who, well, I like using marker and I'm not going to update into digital painting. And they might be better designers, they might be more creative, they likely have much more experience, but there is something to our industry. People are attracted to Flash, and, um, and if you've got to adapt and employ these new tools coming up on the horizon, they're, they're, not only can they make your stuff look cool and more real and, and more photorealistic, but um, also they might be ways to uh, explore new foreign languages and designs. So it's just another tool uh, to help you do more. So you want to talk about this? Or this is pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, I, I yeah. have a question. So for you, what do you see as uh, tools that are coming out that are enhancing? And what happens in the digital? Yeah. Are there? Are there? And why is pretty complicated? Yeah. But are there programs or, or other tools that you see there? That, that's that's a good question. Um, I, I know that I'm playing with box and ZBrush a little bit, um, um, and, 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 and figuring out ways to use that in vehicle design, in more organic shapes. But I'm always looking to exploit the 3D tools in a new way to serve design. Um, I'm a Maya guy, I'm a Photoshop guy, I'm a painter guy, Guy. Um, uh, but uh, some of the more organic modeling tools I'm interested in. I'm also looking at some of the high end renders you've seen um, for Tron, um, Button Speed, and the Key Shop. Uh, some of these new render engines are phenomenal. I would, I would definitely take a look at them. Um, other than that, I, I, I'm not seeing anything huge, but definitely, if you're not using 3D, I would think about it. Or really think about the pipeline where you're able to find other things and then there are the records that are saying, I want to put a real right for the idea. There are better designers that are getting look past because it's, it's just um, they want to see it. They're very worried about their own product. Some directors, I think, are, you know, say, let's just keep it loose and focus on design. I think these tools are. Or aiding artists to get more photo real fast. Um, so uh, collect design and texture references. We went over this in the other one. Uh, even today, when an artist can conjure up hundreds of images on Google in minutes, it's still a good idea to have an organized, dedicated reference collection. Scan books, do screen grabs of your favorite movies, as well as online searches. Go out and do photo gathering trips, museums, architectural sites, other places of interest. Having this reference easily accessible will save you valuable time um, uh, when inspiration and photos come to So you've got to have this. Um, every artist I know has it. You can carry around their hard drive and there they go. Just go this one. The observational studies, again, we went over this. Uh, an important part of artistic self improvement references are, are start, looking at time to sketch, do a painting study, will deepen your understanding of the thing. It's an anatomy, unique form, language, function, and how it works in this scenario. This deeper understanding will pay off when it comes to doing ideation when it comes to the job. Again, we're just sort of we're putting that library that's that's on the hard drive, we're putting part of it up here. Because especially when you're doing ideation sketches, there's only so much reference you can put in front of yourself. I have reference up on the monitor, I put together physical boards of, of scrap art in front of me. So I, I have a, a physical portfolio of just awesome stuff that just uh, it forms me in neat ways, with the design of an amoeba, a Russian fighter plane, whatever it is, I'll, I'll put these things in and purposely juxtapose them on the page to conjure up new ideas and scenarios. Uh, yep. Uh, in doing the deadline, what amount of time do you yourself to research for 
Again, if, it, if it's a fast turnaround, oh, you, so you've given me a two-week period to, to, okay, and I would almost spend the first week doing research and, and, uh, and uh, learning, uh, putting together uh, reference boards, uh, writing, and, uh, and maybe only the equipment some scribbles. And I think if you put most of your work time into that, you're just never going to be afforded that time. But if you gave me two weeks, and, and the client allowed me to do that, anything more, that's what I'm going to do. And, and it is going to accelerate the process that happens there. I know the whole time you're like, oh my god, when I was less experienced, you said, I'm going to get this going on. You know, and, and you don't. If you don't have a good idea, you are, again, polishing the turd. So put that energy in up front and be brave about it and, and protect it and, um, and uh, try to get that done. Pay off. And sometimes you just gotta slap it together, and that's where you gotta be good. You gotta have the stuff in mind. You have to be aware of what's going on because you might not have the time to do this research. You just gotta nail it right out of the day. So, so you gotta always be in mind, always be ready. Uh, keep up with current events is the same thing. Read find you know, fantasy, science fiction, learn about the latest scientific discoveries and theories, what's happening in fashion and other design fields, what's going on in the uh, world of art watch new and older films. Many of these topics will be mentioned or referred to in design briefings. To better understand and communicate with your client, know what's out there. Again, if you're going into the film business, you've got to know films. If you're going into the game industry, you've got to know games. These things will be referred to. I want this kind of like the scene in Lord of the Rings. This will come up again and again and again. If you haven't seen these films, then you've got to go and watch them fast. And many times you know, in bigger studios, you'll have reference people who will provide you some of this stuff before you start, so you are you know, prepared. But it's it's much better if you have this stuff from the get-go. And again, not just old new movies, you know, older movies too. A lot of these people are older and they will be aware of some really great stuff that's happened before the mid-80s. You know, it's important. And a lot of the stuff today is referencing, paying homage, or ripping off these great films that have happened before. Let's go with this. Uh, always remain open to critiques and suggestions, uh, especially when they're coming from someone more experienced. Uh, this is one of the best ways to grow and grow quickly. Uh, also, try to return the favor uh, whenever possible. Uh, this will help you to become more analytical. To become more analytical by your design, composition, and story, uh, expediting future problems. If you're able to think about it and talk about it, typically if you're able to talk about it, you're able to think about it. And so this, this, you know, uh, this will uh, speed things up. Just one other thing I wanted to sort of want to track um, um, Art Center had a pretty harsh, uh, the, the critiques were, were quite strong. And so, you know, your real friends will be honest with you need to be open to that. Again, checking your ego. Um, you can sit there and spend your energy spinning, you know, defending your, your work. But if someone does more than you, they can help you. Listen to it, take it, and thank them. And, and, and try to return that favor. Be analytical, discuss their art, why it's working, why you like it. Ask a lot of questions, think. That's, that's really important. Oh, thinking. Um, think before you start. Take a moment to slow down and investigate the subject matter before you begin. Again, this is what you're talking about. Um, write a brief, brief statement of intent, or even just a few keywords to keep you on target. Consider a simple scenario in the physics of the world you're creating. Is it Earth-like gravity? If not, how might that influence the local inhabitants, anatomy, architecture, and transportation systems? I always ask a lot of questions. You guys got any questions? So you, you might get a, a brief. Do you feel like they're, they're do you then write your own stuff on? Yeah. So you, so you fill in as much as possible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Writing a, a word contains, I know they say an image is a thousand words, but a word contains so much, so much visually. 
um, I think that's uh, it's a good place to start. Right? Can you do like a practice of keeping these more on display, or how do you pull on? Usually, I'll just keep those in mind, but I have I have physically written them down somewhere. Uh, again, the, the, for the transportation uh, background, uh, we had uh, we had to write a few keywords. Example: our first term project was to be a speed form. Uh, probably some of you guys did that in here, um, or about to. Um, and so, those three keywords would have to cut out the final design story. We have to leave the parent. So things would get keeping the target. I mean, that's something else I want to talk about. Is just sort of the. Um, Collecting your own reference and learning your own stuff, I feel that you know, as an artist, it's not necessarily it is what the client wants. But that said, you know, the concept artists are a special degree. We are all this information that we know is going through a prism, and, and we're going to uh, take this information and distill it and communicate it visually in a different way than say another artist might, even with the same design brief. You know, what we do is special and, and should be unique. So. We can spend our time looking at other artists in the industry and, and we'll homogenize the industry, or we can continue to dive into deeper wells like uh, nature and architecture and all these other fields that have been going on and, and areas of study to really unique and, and in my opinion, hone down a design. Again, when we were talking about the Google and the, and the reference, you know, I started projects where I collected thousands of images and I don't know which way to go. But when I can be washing my hair and see the cracks in the shower door and see interesting shapes, I go, this is my experience. This is something unique. This is something that the next guy is not going to bring to it. And it really hones my ADD <laughs> and gets me to focus on so I think it improves the design by going with what you know. That said, you should know a lot. Okay, we'll go on. Um, get it right no matter how long it takes. Uh, speed will come in time. Obviously, obviously, there will be times given demand of a particular project when you will not have the desired time or resources at your disposal. You will have to push through. Especially now, if your student take full advantage of this development stage to explore new techniques, take risks, always push your art to the best of your abilities. Lay a solid foundation again, and speed will come in time. If you guys are students, this is this is the best time for your artistic careers ever. Yeah, you're going to get in the industry and you're going to meet fantastic people who are going to you know, expand your abilities, but as per you own in your design, this is the time. You don't have a boss coming in and telling you, make it more blue, you can do what you want. So really, really figure out who you are, what you want to say, and get that stuff uh, in there. Really take risks now. I didn't in school, and I regret it to this day. Almost as much as school. But um, I, I, this is um, this is really important. Don't be scared. I know this is commercial and you've got to get a job, but if you have any sort of you've given yourself any space to to do something special right now, take risks, be brave, push it, and it, it will show. It will pay off. Some of the best artists I know that that's what they've done. When we see them flop, 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 and just they've gone exponentially in there. Or just to grow after that period. Uh, being an art concept artist requires one to wear many hats. Some days you'll be asked to be an architect, an aerodynamicist, and others possibly a zoologist. You must know at minimum, you must know at, uh, how to at minimum fake a basic understanding of each of these specific disciplines and many others. Uh, take time to study uh, other subjects and be constantly inquisitive about the world around you, space travel, topography, Roman construction, practices, whatever excites you. Most of these areas of study, even if they seem unrelated, will inform your art, making your imagery more believable and intriguing. I felt there was something, I caught a, a, a talk uh, by Steve Jobs, and in, in college, obviously, a very bright person, but he didn't bounce around a lot in a lot of different subjects. He studied topography, and his classes had nothing to do with computer science. But now that's why the Macs and their OS has this beautiful font is it born windows and all the operating systems on the planet now. So these things that don't necessarily feel like they have anything directly to do with it can inform and improve your designs um, uh, in the long run. They will filter back in. And so just like I can see things in my childhood are informing me now um, that 
antenna at the time felt completely disconnected and possibly on track. So again, that's about the last thing, being brave, giving yourself the time to, to do these other things, origami, whatever, this stuff. I have a friend going doing origami. I was just at the University of Santa Cruz, and I was talking to a guy that had uh, a solar-powered uh, uh, spacecraft that would unfold like origami. You know, it's, it's pretty neat stuff, and um, you would never think that the two had anything to do with each other. So, really delve into other stuff. Don't just stay on the, the concept design forums. Get out there, and network. Uh, knowing people is the best way uh, onto a production, but also remember return the favor. It's a small industry, and reputation and personal relationships are important. This is really important. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if you want a job, knowing people on that specific production so you can tailor your portfolio to their specific needs. Um, you're going to go in there with confidence, and they're going to see something that they want. Um, and then they're going to have all the, the, the social references of what type of person you are, and whether you're going to be fun to work with. Because we're just we're hanging out so much together. Um, prima donnas and, and people are social problems. It, it's, it's a real damper, especially when you're trying to be creative. So it, it's, it's, um, it's important. Have a little fun one. Ultimately, have fun with your design and explorations and your career in general. Make it fun. Remember you're doing this because if you want to. Uh, you know, we're really lucky to be in or, or wanting to pursue this field. Um, it's a special field. Uh, practice uh, makes it perfect, and there, there are no shortcuts. Um, no digital tool, nothing will give you a facet. The people who really make it in this industry, they have artistic uh, foundational skills, um, and, and they're able to you know, port them to any tool. Um, but that's the design, the ideas, the, the artistic sense. This is what people retiring are, are looking for or, or should be looking for. Uh, be inspired and enjoy the journey. Uh, it will show in the final product. Again, if you're not having fun on a piece, it's probably not going to look like you had fun. Hence, the image won't be fun. So try to have fun. Try to remember that while you're doing that. Um, and I think we'll help out immensely. So, uh, thank you. It was fun coming down here, and thanks to Hong and Santosh for inviting me. Yeah, if we have time for uh, questions, we can yeah. do that. Ten minutes? Perfect. Yeah. I just thought about the thing about having fun with your life. Granted, probably like you're working on and on projects you're not going to do. Ooh, there was someone I was talking to about this yesterday, and I think that there's it's healthy to have a maybe it's a Buddhist concept, but to have a, a slight detachment. To me, it helps because I, I often feel that I, I get very stressed in my my need to want to please the director, you know, to to be you know, admired by colleagues and stuff. It, it, it can weigh on me heavily. So I'm slightly dis disconnected from the project. Find it's a, a less worrisome space in order to create. You know, but it, it's not totally me. You know, it's someone else's project, and if the project isn't perfect, that's okay. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm not going to So, is that answering? I think I don't think I think I'm missing something. Well, what is that? Yeah, do it. All the time. Do you next? Uh, like a uh, design an environment. Um, usually, like when I try to approach like an environment, I'd rather uh, start off with an idea, uh, just see like a really dynamic shot, and then I would like think of doing the floor plans afterwards. But if you were saying how it, it may not be interesting from another angle. Around when I'm working for um, specifically like for a film or whatever, would you do the, the mapping first and try to then follow up with the shooting it from an angle, or would it be vice versa? Have like an angle that's inspiring and then develop. It really depends. If this is going to be established in shot and since seeing only one way, yeah. then then maybe no. I mean, I would just approach it from a very 2D um, you know, sense. But if it's something that um, you know characters are going to be moving through, actors are going to be moving through a lot, 
then, then yeah, I would definitely be, but it's, it's, a, it's a juggling act, be considering the functional considerations of the space um, and the, the 2D considerations. Ultimately, it will be a 2D product. Uh, but it, uh, that, it, that's tough. It's just tough. And that's where, for example, when I was working on a vehicle, I was working the silhouette and, and the shapes and the proportions, but I'm also considering the function and, and the package design at the same time. And, and if you can juggle that, yeah. But that's, it's really, really tough. And that's where if you just hop right into 3D and then you find out that the 2D products that are created, maybe not lighting it as well, but considering 2D considerations, which are ultimately the final product, even the video game, it's going to 2D screen. And, um, it's tough. It's tough to do that. But the more you're conscious of it, it will inform your sketches. If I just be loosely, often I do do a quick sketch of the floor plan, quickly, just go, hey, I know that these sort of things need to occur. And then I will take my station point down to you know, the human height level and start uh, going in the environment. I just really lose the percent. Some idea of the function. It's going to improve your design. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and you had a question? Yeah. yeah um, I just have a question about um, if you have a ZBrush for, you know how they have now the new part surface following the uh, aspect of it? But do uh, you think, yeah, I'm not sure how much experience you have with it, or if you do a part of the to do a uh, something that's enough to take over, not necessarily to take over, but uh, where you don't need necessarily buy it, you're not that familiar with it, you just go to ZBrush. I know, I know the best guys in the world that are exploring those tools. Definitely right now, yeah. But, but um, you know, Maya, Maya is ultimately more capable. But it depends on what you want to accomplish in your pipeline. I mean, if you you have a very narrow character pipeline, well, then great. But ZBrush might be able to fill all your needs. But like you said, it sounds like there's a, a hard point modeler. But you have one Yeah. Yeah, and, and then you know you've got the, the render engine you know, it really depends. If you know a program like Maya, or Max, or whatever, these things are much more robust, but then technically there's there's a lot more hangups that you're going to have to come with. There's a lot more you can do in order to make these things function well. Or you can go with a package that has more of a streamlined render, streamlined modeling, organic modeling package, and then you're going to be limited in, in some other area. 